So this is Masha. She contacted me a while ago with a message and said she was having trouble leading her horse uh, from point A to point B, that the horse would get stubborn and refuse to follow her. When I got there, I sat down and visited with her for a while and I realized that there's actually a deeper issue. I only want you to do what you're comfortable with. If you feel in any danger or you feel scared, you stop, okay? Immediately, don't, you don't have to do anything. Are you scared to get on him today? I am. So after watching Masha work with her horse a little bit, I could see where the problem was. The horse would kind of associate being led into the wash rack with pressure of being ridden and doing some work. And so the horse had learned that it could outfocus her by just stopping and bulking up and refusing to go forward at that moment. So there's the spot. Now, two couple things here. One thing you could do is every time he stopped, you would turn and look at him. You would lose focus. You have to have a strong focus. So one thing I could do is I could let the rope slide and put a little bit of pressure on until he comes forward. That's one strategy, but I wanna give you another strategy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little feel here and spank him on the butt. <laughs> Did you see the reaction from that? He, like, whoa, he got me, okay? That was more effective. So the pressure that I used with the halter was like just slightly more than what he wanted. So it worked, but just barely. The string was more. It's about when I put a feel here, he says yes. <laughs> so I just want to quickly show that technique I was using. So what's really important here is the timing of wind pressures coming on. So this horse had a very, very predictable habit of you're leading him and he stops and just refuses to come forward. So now, if I would was leading him and I take the time to stop and I go back to get in a really good position to be able to add pressure to his hindquarters, that would take uh, a little too much time and the horse would end up getting relief for refusing to go forward. Now, the horse isn't refusing to go forward because he's scared. He had kind of just learned to say, no, I don't want to, okay? And so what I'm gonna try to do is stand in front of him but work at an angle and try to reach back to the horse's tail. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. It was kind of a poor attempt of it, but why it worked so well is because the pressure was still coming on when he was refusing, so that caused him to go, I don't wanna refuse. Now the pressure came off, as you'll see in the video, when the horse finally goes forward. So the horse went forward and kind of trotted forward around me, that's when the horse got relief. So the that's where the amount of pressure and the timing become really critical elements to training horses. So I'm really glad that came up because th that had more, the most meaning out of all of them. He really was sure not to come forward that time. So he tried very hard to not come forward. So this is good because otherwise I was fixing it at a more surface level. But because he tried very, very hard to go backwards that time, that is gonna have more meaning. It's gonna fix it better. For example. <laughs> See here, he thought about it, and then before I had a chance to use the stick, he changed his mind. So now that we've got through the leading issue and the bridling issue, the horse is operating pretty well. Now I want to get into helping Masha get more confident with her horse. But I want you guys to understand there's two types of fear that can be related to horses. One is a, the real fear that we all should have a baseline um, that our instincts are telling us this could be dangerous because horses are tall and fast and we could get hurt doing something dangerous there. But there's also a more of a made up fear that we carry over if we've had a bad experience. So because she's had a past experience where she got very hurt by her previous horse. She was bucked me off and I had a lot of injuries. I had fractures, like practically all right side. 
she's bringing some of that fear into her training sessions with this new horse. So over the years, I've learned a few strategies to help riders uh, deal with confidence issues. And honestly, more than teaching horsemanship, it's one of the main things that I help people do is build their own self-confidence and build their confidence working with horses. So there's, there's a proactive approach and a reactive approach. So I wanted to give her some strategies to help her if she's riding her horse and she starts to feel like she's shutting down. And um, what happens is as, as fear starts to take over, our vision becomes very narrow. Our breathing and heart rate increase and we start to not even be able to think and, and react appropriately. So the first thing that I need her to do is if she starts to feel a negative thought come on, I need her to say, this is simple. This is fun, I can do it. So it starts with the thought. We have to have positive thoughts because our brains are wired to make our thoughts become true, okay? So if you're telling yourself that you can't do this, that this is scary, that this is hard, your brain has to make those things true. If you tell yourself, this is simple, this is fun, and you can do it, your brain has to now make that true. The second strategy that I gave her was a, a breathing technique. So what I wanted her to do is breathe in for four seconds through her nose, hold it for four seconds, and then also breathe out her mouth for four seconds. And this is a strategy that can help us lower our heart rate and help her kind of get recomposed. The third thing that I'm having her do is when we become very afraid, we lose our ability to notice things and we lose awareness. Our awareness becomes more tunnel vision. And so I wanted to give her a strategy of just looking around and checking in with herself and seeing if she can observe things uh, on her left side, her right side, and also up above her. If, you, if you're going to ride, what I would recommend is either you tack him up and then do this or do this before you tack him up, but you're gonna work with him like this. One of the things that was affecting her confidence is when she felt her horse take over on the ground, that reminded her of feelings of being more helpless or out of control that she had with her previous horse. And so what I wanted her to do is give her a few more groundwork strategies. Even though her horse was pretty good on the ground, I wanted to give her some strategies that would help her feel more empowered and more like the leader for her horse. And this is about your connection to him. Him being connected to you and listening to you and saying yes and doing it with you together. So one might be the hindquarter yield. When I do the hindquarter yield, I want to be specific. I'm lifting the rope when his front feet go forward. I want him to just pivot. Like that. That was better. So now I'm going to relax my energy and then I'll come and I'll pet him with the stick because I don't want him to become afraid of it. So it doesn't take long to figure out that horsemanship is more of a journey than a destination. Uh, it's challenging, it can be difficult, it can be emotional, it can be dangerous, and I think that it's important for everybody to have a mentor through that process. I would like to be your mentor, and I can do that through my Patreon page. We have detailed training videos on there, we have monthly giveaways, you can ask me questions about your horse and even do video coaching. So check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Now, I'm gonna ask him to back up off of my energy. Perfect, very good, very good. So, because that was so easy, I don't need to continue practicing. Now I'm focusing on just the four quarters. So I'm walking in front of him, there, and looking for him to step over, but not go forward. He feels very good. See his attention? He likes to pay. He likes to listen. And he likes to pay attention. It's good. He wants to have the conversation. Now I'm going to ask him to um, lower his head and get better at this part. This will help you with the bridling. So he feels like he kind of knows this, but he's not good at it. So I would encourage you to practice asking him to lower his head more often, not just when you're trying to bridle him. Because then the rule becomes, he has to keep his pole lower than your shoulder. If he goes above, you put a feel and you ask him to bring his head down. Now for a more difficult one, side passing. See that? You see how nice his feet were connected there? Okay, are you ready? 
Your turn. I feel, um, I feel I have horse again. I, I have horse back. So Masha regaining control of her horse on the ground made a big difference in her confidence for riding the horse. So with the strategies that she has and what she's learned on the ground, she felt much better about riding her horse. So I hope from watching this video, you guys can appreciate how being a good leader for our horses on the ground directly translates to riding. And where our mental state is at and our emotional state as we're handling horses makes a massive difference. So check in with yourself, get yourself collected and organized and feeling good before you go into playing with your horse. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.